What's up, Flow Hoops fans? I'm Nicole Beckelman, joined here with Dre Hayes, and we will be discussing all things for the CAA Men's Conference Tournament. Dre, I don't know about you, but this is my favorite time of year. What are you most looking forward to next weekend? Yep, March Madness is finally here. Super excited for the tournament to start. Regular season just ended for the CAA with Charleston taking the championship again this year. So with them in the number one seed, I'm looking ready. I'm ready for the tournament to get started. All right, obviously Charleston is favored to win. They are ranked number one. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, they won last year. Who do you think could give them a run for their money? You know, I'm looking at UNCW and Hofstra as my, my picks to give them a run for their money. UNCW has been the runner-up the past two years in a row. And, of course, they have Trezerian White as one of the leading scorers this year. So I'm super excited to see what they have in store. We know Charleston has had a great winning streak since February. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was a good thing for them to kind of build momentum? Or do you think they maybe peaked too early and that might be kind of bad news for them as they go into this tournament? Yeah, so Charleston did end the season on a nine-game winning streak. What people have to remember is last year they also ended the season on a seven game winning streak before they went on to win the whole tournament last year so I don't think they peaked too early as long as they're able to keep their discipline and stay healthy you know I think these guys are more than ready to continue into the tournament. You mentioned UNCW. UNCW is the only team to beat Charleston twice this season in the CAA. Mm -hmm. What do you think is so special about UNCW and why do you think this is the team that could beat Charleston? Yeah, so the Seahawks have came up short in the championship game the past two years, losing by less than double digits. And as you mentioned, they are the only team to beat the number one seed Charleston this year twice. So behind the leadership of Trezerian White and Shaquem Phillips leading the scoring for the Seahawks, I feel like they have you know enough momentum going into this year to maybe get over that hump and win the tournament if they do make it back into the championship. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that has really led to the success of Charleston this mm -hmm. season is their coach, Pat Kelsey. Um, he is the fifth all-time winningest coach in the history of the Big South Conference before he came and coached at Charleston. This is his third year at Charleston. Mm -hmm. What do you think he's done for the program? Yeah, and only, you know, three years at Charleston, he's already got that program to the forefront of the CAA, you know, two years back to back leading the conference. Um, I think it's a credit to his team's discipline under his leadership. Um, he is a former D1 point guard at the University of Xavier, so I feel like him having that background and coming in with a, a new mindset for this Charleston program is, has proven that if you get under a, a good coach and follow their direction, that they can lead you to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Uh, we keep talking about Charleston as they mm -hmm. are the number one ranked team in this conference. Do you think that they have a shot at making a run in the big dance? You know, last year they, they did make an early exit in the first round. To who? Oh, yeah, someone's alma mater here, SDSU. <laughs> but if they do get back into that situation, I feel like they will have, you know, more momentum to to make a run just because last year was their first time with that head coach getting a chance in March Madness. So I feel like this year, you know, a little bit more experience and having some a familiar roster from last year with a lot of people returning, they could make a run. All right, now we got to talk about a few of the other teams in this tournament. Towson did beat UNCW in regular conference play. If Towson wins their game on Saturday at 2.30, then they will play UNCW the next day. Um, Trezarian White had 33 points the first time they played Towson, and UNCW still lost. Mm -hmm. What do you think it'll take for Towson to beat the Seahawks if they win their game on Saturday? Yeah, regardless of what the CAA rankings say, Towson is one of the toughest teams in this CAA conference. Like you mentioned, their, their wins earlier this season over UNCW make them a, a tough matchup. I think even though Trezarian White and you know, Phillips scoring the way they score. Teams like UNCW who have, you know, a roster of players scoring maybe 12 to 14 points a game can still win if they if they remain disciplined and lock in on, you know, these higher scores in the conference like, like White and Phillips. Another team that, I mean, I wouldn't say they're the dark horse, they're ranked mm -hmm. number two, is Hofstra. Right. They have the guard, Tyler Thomas. We've mm -hmm. seen him come out big in clutch moments. I mean, had that buzzer beater against Stony Brook, mm -hmm. electric. He's also the leading scorer right now in the CAA. What makes Hofstra so special with him on the roster? Yeah, Hofstra is um, a school that has produced a lot of great guards recently in the CAA, having the men's value, most valuable player last year in Aaron Estrada. This year, Tyler Thomas has been leading the way for the Pride. 
Um, I think with him being the third leading scorer in the nation across all colleges, not just the CAA, I mean, he's going to be explosive going into March. If, if teams want to win versus this squad, they have to slow them down for sure. We saw for Charleston's last game of the season, they beat Hofstra, and it, it took, you know, a lot of focus on Tyler Thomas and, and focusing in on him for them to get that win. Yeah, and it's very possible that Charleston and Hofstra could see each other in the finals of this yep. tournament. Uh, if that happens, I mean, we, we saw the last game of the season. We saw Charleston beat mm -hmm. Hofstra. Do you think Hofstra has a chance to beat Charleston in that game? You know, with that last loss of the season, you know, they're going to have some, some builds of animosity going into that matchup. And that also gives, you know, coaches another chance to game plan it and re-strategize re going into the, to the game. Amari Williams, the forward on Drexel, he was named the CAA Defensive Player of the Year the past two seasons. How do you think Amari Williams will help Drexel claim the title this weekend? Yeah, I think Drexel is really going to have to hone in around him and, and the paint going forward in postseason play. Uh, in the CAA, there's a lot of high, high volume guard play, a lot of shots, a lot of threes going up. So when you have a solid big man like that, you definitely need to go through him both on offense and defense. So. And I think he's also a safe bet for going three-time uh, Defensive Player of the Year as well. In the CAA tournament, every year they have a most outstanding player. Last year, it was Ryan Larson. He has now graduated. He was formerly on Charleston. Who is your pick to be the most outstanding player for the CAA men's tournament? You know, it depends on who can really make a run. But like I mentioned, if if... Tyler Thomas from Hofstra can get hot. I feel like it's his to take, you know. He's been player of the week three times this season and then been leading the NCAA and scoring top five, you know. I feel like he's probably, you know, the number one choice right now, but there are also some other names that could make a run. Like who? Uh, Smith from Charleston. He just had a, a great week this week in finishing the CAA regular season. He had 31, a, a season high for them for Charleston on Thursday. And then he finished the season with 21 against Hofstra. Um, with play like that, you know, on a team where most players only score, you know, 12 to 14 points per game, um, outstanding performances like that are really gonna be like what makes a player like that stand out in the, in the tournament. Personally, my pick for the most outstanding player, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Trezarian White. When he is hot, he is so good. He is unstoppable. He's mm -hmm. so dynamic on the court. Um, he's such a smart player too. Mm -hmm. and he's so fun to watch. I think he's one of the most dynamic players in the sense that he gets downhill consistently, but can also shoot the shoot the ball very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if UNCW uh, plays their game, they could easily come out on top. In, in this tournament, but um, like I said, it's uh, Tracy Arian White who's gonna lead the Seahawks there. Agreed. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I will be at the CAA men's and women's tournament, so I look forward to bringing all the exciting content to Flow Hoops.